Thank you very much, and it's, uh, it's great to see so many people here. I've just, uh, like John, come out of the Commons. We've just had a debate. I don't know what the result's going to be, but I think the one thing which is absolutely certain is the government are not going to be able to carry this uh, on Labour votes, because the Labour rebellion is going to be almost as large as it was over the Iraq war. And I think that makes it absolutely clear. I think it makes it absolutely clear that this issue, whatever the vote tonight, is not finished. This is the start of a long struggle, and it is one which I'm still convinced that we can win. The consultation which we've seen has been a complete sham, just a couple of months. Uh, we had a year's consultation on the Strategic Defence Review when Labour came in. It's all been squeezed like this because the, the government doesn't want the electorate to be involved in this. Well, I say to them that we need to reopen this decision. We need to have a new and fresh one-year consultation with the electorate and then a proper debate in Parliament with a new vote which gives a fresh and genuine mandate. And that's what I think we should be demanding. The truth is, the truth is, what came out in this debate very clearly, this is not an independent British nuclear deterrent. We are utterly dependent on the Americans. It's not even certain that we could use it if we wanted to because of our dependence on the Americans, on software, on guidance systems, on warheads, on missiles. It is not an independent British nuclear deterrent. But what it does do is that the Americans give it to us, or they sell it to us, we have to pay for it, because, not because we are necessary for the defense of the West, but because it makes us dependent on U.S. foreign policy, on Iraq, Lebanon, and maybe on Iran. And I say to continue with that for the next 40 years is a political price which most of us are not prepared to pay. Let me say, the only argument, the only argument that the government can use is to say, no, we can't recognize an enemy where we need nuclear weapons today, or indeed one which is likely in the future. All that we're saying is you never know, you need an insurance policy, there could be a rogue state in 50 years, who knows? Well, what the government doesn't seem to realize is that if we need nuclear weapons against such an extremely unlikely possibility, then everyone needs nuclear weapons against such an un extremely unlikely possibility. And the effect of this is going to be nuclear proliferation across the whole world. And that is the greatest danger that we face. And what we need to do, I think, we don't have to take a decision on this before 2014. That's perfectly clear. We're being bounced. Parliament's being bounced. You're being bounced. We need to use these next seven years, in my opinion, in government and to demand this that we take the lead in Britain in a multilateral nuclear disarmament conference worldwide. Not only the nuclear weapon states, but all of the 40 technologically advanced states which are perfectly capable of generating nuclear weapons, to bring them together and to get an agreement with us in the lead and prepared to make this concession ourselves if we can get agreement with all the others. That's the way to a safer world. It's the only way to a safer world. And it's one that I think, and it's great to see so many people here. That's all we've got to fight for. All power to your elbow. And the leading figures in the